Praise the Lord. I'm excited, Pastor, to be doing this with you. <laughs> All right. I think uh, we got a few more people to let in, but why don't we go ahead and get started, Dr. Miles? What do you think? Yeah, I see people. Yeah, there's uh, the old man. You are. Okay, then I'm, I'm going to let you focus on um, uh, onboarding them. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and get uh, started. Hey, welcome everybody to this incredible web webinar, The Mystery of the Priesthood and the Altar with Dr. Francis Miles. My name is Craig Hill. I'm the founder of Family Foundations International, and uh, Dr. Miles and I have done several uh, online webinars like this together. And uh, so I'm just excited to uh, have Dr. Miles be willing to share with us uh, today what God has shown us, him about the mystery of the priesthood and the altar. So, Dr. Miles, before we do anything else, would you mind just praying uh, to just release the power of the Holy Spirit on this time so that every one of us can receive exactly what we need? Amen. Amen. Thank you, man of God. Father, we thank you that let the spirit of revelation be uninterrupted. Let the technology work, let the internet work, let everything come together. But most importantly, Lord, let this be a moment of divine impartation. That nobody will leave this uh, webinar the same way that they came in. That there'll be a divine elevation in priesthood that will never be reversed. The gains they make in the spirit will never be taken away from them. In the mighty and the glorious name of Jesus Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Miles. And it is just exciting. Hey, let me set your expectation today that as you're jumping on this webinar, would you put your antennas up like, to like a lightning rod to receive the anointing that God has through Dr. Miles today? Expect this to be a life-changing time because these are some incredible truths that uh, all of us need to get. And most people have never heard these kind of things before. So, Dr. Miles, let's, uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get right into explaining the priesthood, the mystery of the priesthood and the altar. And uh, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Amen. I'm so excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, wow. Praise God. Saints, this is exciting. This is Dr. Francis Miles. Like Apostle Craig has said, him and I, you know, the Lord has put us together in an amazing spiritual partnership for the advancement of the kingdom since we made at the Awakening Conference in Indiana, uh, Nashville, Indiana. So we've been working together. Well, listen, saints, Thank you for coming to the free webinar. I can still see more people are jumping in. You know, the good news is that if they miss even a little, if they miss even two minutes, five minutes, the good news is we are recording this uh, live, a life changing teaching. The reason we are recording it is because we really want to, we really want to make it so that uh, we really want to make it so that um, you can. I mean, refresh this in posterity, that you can uh, go back to it, you know, that it remains there as something that, you know, will be part of your divine arsenal for many years to come. Amen. So again, I welcome you to this free webinar via Zoom on the mystery of the priesthood and the altar traveling in the, the nations of the earth than the subject of priesthood. I think that the kingdom of God doesn't work for Christians. Now, this might shock you. I, I mean, the kingdom of God doesn't work very well for Christians. That's why he, he, most Christians are very frustrated with because they are, they are bringing Christianese to a kingdom that requires you to be a priest. You see, God did not really come to die for Christians. He came to die for kings and priests. This is the book of Revelation. You know, his blood was shed that he might redeem us back to himself to become what? Kings and priests unto God. This has always been the divine agenda from Genesis to Revelation. You know, we will see in the, you will see priesthood in the Garden of Eden. 
you can walk away from it. That even though the garden was one of the assignments of Adam, his highest calling in the garden was priesthood. That's why when priesthood was lost by, by rebellion, when they listened to an, a, a, an unemployed cherubim called Lucifer, when they lost that, when they lost that, you know what happened is God came in the cool of the day looking for them. So I'm going to give you some key statements that I won't, I never want you to forget. Maybe write them down. Okay, even though you're gonna get the you're gonna get the video replay of this teaching. Sometimes I find when I write things down, they go real deep in my spirit. So these are case statements I'm going to make. And then as we go into the teaching, they'll be they'll be expanded upon, they will filter in everything I'm saying, you know, and they will really crystallize the fact that the church cannot go any further. We'll keep losing to the demonic powers if we don't understand the mystery of priesthood and the altar. So here are the case statements, and I'm going to explain each one of them as I go. The highest calling of man is not apostleship. It's not prophet. It's not teacher. I thank God for this ministry, five foot gifts that people even fight for. I've seen people, literally I've seen people pay thousands to bribe a bishop to anoint them to be a bishop, to ordain them to a bishop. But you know, it doesn't mean nothing if in the world of spirit, they don't recognize you as a priest because the highest calling of man is priesthood. I can guarantee you, man was created. Yes, I thank God for dominion. But dominion is that dominion is how we respond to, to the assignment God has given us, you know, to cultivate the planet. But priesthood is how we respond to God. You can't respond to God and say, Oh, God, I've dominion over you. Actually, it's sacrilege to, to tilt the weapon of dominion towards God. You can't. Like the 24 elders, dominion may be the crown on your head. But when God shows up, you better take it off because your highest expression. Are your highest calling an expression to God as a human being is priesthood. And this is what is lacking in the church today. Priesthood is lacking. You know, and you, you discover as we go why it's lacking. Now, the second key statement that I want you to take away from this life-changing webinar is this. That the highest calling of a priest is attending to the altar. That's why in the Bible you do whatever you find priesthood, you find the altar. It's impossible actually to have priesthood without the altar. And you're going to find out that the reason is being that God can, that, that, that the altar legalizes the, the exchanges between spirit, spirit between the celestial and the terrestrial. You're going to find out that is very much involved in that exchange, in that legalization of the interactions between uh, spirits in body of flesh like me and Apostle Craig, like you, and, uh, and God who is a spirit, has no flesh and bones on him. He's nothing but spirit. He lives in a spirit dimension. He is everywhere, but yet he's spirit. That's what Yeshua tells us. You know, and I can say this, another, this other statement, no priesthood is ever viable without altar, other than an altar. You are going to find this everywhere in scripture. You know, Peter tells us we're a royal priesthood. He lets us know that's our highest calling. We're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. You know, delivered to proclaim the praises of him who took us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Priesthood, my friend, is the highest calling. Don't fight to be an apostle. I mean, if you're an apostle, great. And me and me, me an apostle, great. We have an apostolic calling. But our highest desire is priesthood. You know, because I've met some guys who are apostles. They, they stink. In the nostrils of God, they are full of pride. There is, they, they, I mean, they don't hear him from God. But boy, do they have title! You can see there's no priesthood because whatever there is priesthood, you see the meekness of the twenty-four elders. Because priesthood, I'm telling you, it will bring meekness because it brings you into reality that you are just a man before an awesome, awesome, awesome God. So no priesthood is ever viable without an altar. You know, in First Corinthians nine verse thirteen, the Bible tells us, "Don't you know?" That he who serves, who serves, who who works in the temple, you know, who is employed by the temple, you know, it's uh, 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 partakes in the food given to the temple, and he who attends to the altar shares in the offerings that are brought to the altar. These are powerful things, you know. You you have to understand that. 
Then again, we 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 add to some more to, to our key statements. You know, because these key statements I'm giving you, they are foundational to what we want to get done. I can see some people are saying, wow. I mean, I'm thanking God that you're responding that way, that your spirit is hungry and you're just eating this thing up. Okay? That's why I double dare you when you get the replay link. Do not be, uh, do not be a cow to sack and hold it. You want to spread it, forward it. I mean, you are, we're giving you the permission to forward this teaching. Once you receive the, the recorded, the link for the recorded stream, we want you to forward it to as many people as can. You have our uh, permission to do that because we want to we want to touch as many people and bring many Christians into the understanding of priesthood. Now here are three more key statements uh, that I want to deal with as we build on the mystery of the priesthood and the altar. God can only be approached through the vehicle of a consecrated priesthood. We find this in scripture. You know, God is not an idol. You can just say, I'm going to give you this. Ah, ah, ah. You know, there is, a, there is a desire. God is very clear in the Bible. As a matter of fact, even the high priest, are to, are to in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament Levitical order, the high priest literally had to sanctify himself, cleanse himself walk the whole year for one encounter with God on Yom Kippur as he goes before the Holy of Holies to try to atone for the sins of the people. Why? Because God is not an idol that you can give whatever you think and you'll be happier. That you can't throw a thousand dollars at God when you're living like the devil's cousin. No, God requires a consecrated priesthood. He can only be approached. This is the tenet of scripture, is the tension of scripture from Revelation to Genesis, from Genesis to Revelation, sorry, and vice versa. God can only be approached through the vehicle of a consecrated priesthood. I believe you are listening to this because you are being reconsecrated by God to the priesthood of God. And I'm telling you, the days ahead of you are going to be years of ecstasy and intimacy with the Lord. The second statement I want to make is this. A concern, again, we're unraveling the mystery of priesthood and the altar. The intermediary, the intermediary between, between God and priesthood is the altar. Standing between God on one side, the altar on one side, what do we find? We find God. This is the issue about the altar. It is a powerful intermediary, the altar of God. You know, it's a powerful intermediary, the altar of God, because guess what? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what God wants. You know, he wants you to understand that. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just lost the PowerPoint. Amen. Apostle, if you can put it back there, my bad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But, but, but as he's putting back the PowerPoint, amen, I want to spotlight him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you something, that this issue of priesthood is no joke. It is the most important thing happening in the earth today. Okay, it is, it is, it is the thing. So, Apostle, I'm going to spotlight you for everything so you can continue to share your PowerPoint. So, if you can continue, go ahead and put it up. Amen. It was a mistake on my end. Hallelujah. But while you're putting back and getting us back to where we were, I just want to let the people know there is no better meeting you could have attended today than this meeting on priesthood. You know, you know look at the scandals we're seeing in the church today. Because preachers have replaced preaching for priesthood. It doesn't work. Because you can preach at people, but you can't preach at God. <laughs> you know? And, and so it's important for us to understand that. You know, thank you so much, man, man of God. There we are back in, in place. So I hope somebody's got, in your comment section, in the chat, write stuff. Maybe at the end, I'll look at the chat. If you've got some questions, we may look at the chat later. But I'm so fired up. You know, Apostle Craig, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm on fire, man. You know, I believe we've got to get this thing of priesthood right in the body of Christ. So, like I said, the intermediary between God and the priesthood is the altar. You see it. Why the altar? Because of the next key statement is why the altar is in the middle between God and priesthood. As a matter of fact, even in the demonic kingdom, Satan cannot produce anything original. At best, the Satan say at best, Satan is a copycat. At best, he is what a copycat. 
Oh, yes, he is. Okay, so that's why you find even in demonic priesthood, the altar is never missing in the demonic priesthood. You see it in the movies, you see it in real life, coming, living in Africa. My God, I see it every day. Okay, if those who are Asians, Asians who are, who are around the Hinduism, Buddhism, you see the altar, you see the Buddhist priests, the Buddhist monks, they are a priesthood of Buddha. You see the altar, you see this is because Satan has stolen the template of priesthood and applied it to his people while he's robbing the church of priesthood. He just wants us to be happy. Okay, I'm prophetess, whatever, and you are so happy even because you're a prophetess, but in heaven is your priesthood recognized. Are you a priest in heaven or are you just a titled person on earth? May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Now, why is the altar the intermediary between God and priesthood? Because of the next statement. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, 27, something big happens on that day. Okay, something huge happened in creation. Dr. Mouse, what happened on that day? God, our Father, God, our Father, decided to create you and I. He decided by divine providence to create you and I on the sixth day of creation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. You know, and he decided, he decided, he decided, um, let us make man in our own image. I think every believer, if you've been in the Lord long enough, this ought to be something you understand very well, okay? You know, if you've been in the Lord long enough, this is going to be something you understand very, very well. You know, that uh, or God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have what? Dominion. Well, that word dominion is a Hebrew word, mamlaka. Well, mamlaka literally means to be in charge, to be in authority, to be dedicated, to have a kingdom. You can go on and on and on. What Mamlaka communicates, that God in his foreknowledge, without anybody forcing him, because nobody can force God's hand, decided to have you, to have men, become the legal steward, legal steward of a planet God created. So God, through Mamlaka, gives us a territorial rights to the earth, not ownership of it, but territorial rights to the earth are given to us, okay? And God said, let them have dominion. And then he describes the them as being male and female, which means dominion is genderized. So if you want to understand all the demonic confusion around gender, it is Satan trying to, trying to short circuit the gift of Mamlaka that God only gave to two genders, male and female. Meaning if you deny the gender of male and female, you lose priesthood, you lose dominion, you're just an empty, but you are just a vehicle. Demons can ride till the day you drop dead. And the devil is laughing all the way as he drags your soul to hell. But uh, because dominion was given to male and female. But that also meant that the earth became the world of men. Okay? So in order for God interact with men and with with spirit in a dead body there had to be an there had to be a place of meeting a place of exchange a place of of exchange a, a gate so to speak between the celestial world and the terrestrial world of men and that instrument that stands in altar 27 is made altars the order of men that's why the devil can't ignore altars and most importantly god almighty can never ignore altars which means again then altars also instigate a priesthood you see why how this thing works so priesthood is so intricately tied into your essence. You are not happy because you, I mean, that's why some of you, you buy cars, you buy big houses, you are not happy. Okay, at best there, you got, you forget a couple of weeks. But after now, it's gotten old and you are raised to drive a Bentley. That's a good blessing. You, know, you are raised to be a priest to God.
God moves Hallelujah. Give me the next slide. I'm, I'm so excited about what God is saying right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, now let's define priesthood because if priesthood is the highest calling of man, it must be defined. We cannot leave priesthood and relegate it to the mere opinions of men. Something this powerful, something this explosive must be explained. It has to be explained. Priesthood is the divinely inspired ability. Write it down. Even though you can see it, it's something about scribing it. It goes in your spirit. Okay? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. More people are just jumping in, coming to the meeting room. That's amazing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Priesthood is the divinely, uh, is a divinely inspired ability to minister to the Lord while discerning the spirituality of life on earth. I will say it again because I'm going to work that thing. Priesthood is the divinely inspired ability to minister to the Lord while discerning the spirituality of life on earth. Dr. Mouse, please explain. You see, you know, in Hebrews, the Bible says that by faith we understand that the worlds, the worlds that we live in were framed, put together by the word of God. Is that right? So that things which do appear, things which are seen, the visible dynamics of life are being influenced by things which cannot be seen. The ability to discern what is behind visible dynamics, that's priesthood. That's one level of priesthood. Okay? Like when Sanballat and Tobias go to Nehemiah and they say all these things, and Nehemiah says, and I perceived that the Lord had not sent them. You see, that's priesthood. The ability to go beyond the veil and touch the invisible dynamics that are animating the activity in your life. You know? But the highest level of priesthood is ministering to the Lord. That's the first embassy of priesthood. You know, so many pastors, can, that's how you know when God judges a man or one of these guys you call famous, they're not, they are re, they are reprehensible in heaven. heaven. Heaven finds them reprehensible. Why? Because in their private life, they are so compromised. Their garments are stained with pride, sexual sin, stealing, all that stuff, even though you don't know about it because they have got amazing marketing social media teams that are making them look bigger than they are in heaven, but they can never minister to the Lord. They stink before the nostrils of God. But I'm telling you, because the highest order of priesthood is ministering to the Lord. The Bible says, and the child Samuel was sleeping by the ark of the covenant. That's where Samuel um, was sleeping. He could have, I'm sure there was many rooms in Shiloh because obviously the high priest Eli, the backslidden high priest Eli was snoring on a great maybe king size bed when the boy came and said, did you call me? But the Bible says, as the young man was ministering to the Lord, okay? So priesthood is the ability to minister to the audience of one. If you, if all you know is to make some noise and everybody's seeing you, oh, what God is saying, and you all God, you do all of that stuff, you can impress man. But I'm telling you, if you want the glory to show up, you want angels to honor what you are saying, priesthood, then you must be known in the realms of the spirit that you are a master at ministering to the audience of one. And then out of that will come the ability to discern the spirituality of life. That even the laying on of my hands can transfer power and cancer dies. What? I didn't see nothing. It's just my hands. But priesthood says, if I lay hands on, a, on cancer, it will dry up. That's priesthood. Priesthood will tell me, if I say to the fig tree, be dried by the root. I don't have to say it. But tomorrow by priesthood, the thing has dried up. That is priesthood. And this is what God wants to awaken in you. Hallelujah. Now, now, now uh, second definition of priesthood. Priesthood always flows from God to man and man to God and man to man. I'll say it again. This is huge. Priesthood always flows from God to man. You can't be a priest and God, unless God touches you. God has to touch you. You haven't you have not you have not chosen me but i have chosen you jesus said so priesthood always flows from god to man and then man to god not faith why because the man god touches must know how to touch god back the more i touch god back 
Now I have a deposit of God to give man to man. The reason why many, many of these churches are dry is because the pastor, I mean, he can't remember the last time he was God to man. Him and God just wrestling it out. He's always preparing sermons for other people. So it's man to man. After a while, it's dry. And before you know it, they are compromised in foolish nonsense. In Acts 13, Paul the apostle was called to become an apostle because the Bible, as they were ministering to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me. They were ministering to the Lord when Paul received a powerful apostolic ministry that would produce three quarters of the Bible. I'm asking, if you take priesthood seriously and you, I have no, we have no idea what you'll become because one moment of ministering to the Lord, you could go there and come out with a vision that can change the world because you are ministering to the audience of one and you became impregnated with vision in the realm of glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, let's keep this baby going because I'm telling you, I'm on fire. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I hope somebody's getting those notes. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So next slide, man of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, hallelujah. You know, this is very interesting. Because now, as, as part of defining priesthood, we must also define the altar. Okay? You know, so now, you know, because this is important, because the altar is important to priesthood. Okay? So now, because remember, our teaching is the mystery of priesthood and the, and, and, and the, and the altar. So now, we're going to deal with the altar side of the priesthood. Because you got to understand the altar. You're going to understand, when you understand altar, you understand why you are fighting evil altars that the enemy has erected in your bloodline long before you know you are called to be an apostle, you're called to do the ministry, called to business. The enemy was already strategizing to fight you, destroy you, because he was planting evil altars in your bloodline because you know the devil knows nobody can do anything on the earth without an altar because, because no human being can do anything meaningful without the backing of a spirit. No human being, no human being has been able to do anything lasting, incredible without the help of a spirit. Spirits must be involved for men to move forward. And that spirit might be God or a demon or a, or a fallen angel, but the spirit must be involved for men to move forward. And for a spirit to be involved, an altar must be there. So the altar is the office of a priesthood. So imagine, Craig, you can see my friend Craig was in his office. You know, you, you, it does all the things in his office. When you get, when you, when you get a new job, you know, the one of the things they show is your office. You like, it, it, it could be a cubicle, but you are proud of it because, you know, on that office, that's when you can execute your work. Well, the altar is the office of a priest. The altar is the office of priesthood. So if you don't have an altar, you are a priest without portfolio, just floating around. You got to have an altar. An altar is the office of a priest. It's where God will give you the mysteries of the kingdom. And I understand at the same time that our hearts are called to be more by altars, but, but more by altars. But God wants us to have a more by altar. We make our heart into a more by altar, but also have an altar dedicated to him within our houses. As a matter of fact, what I found in my life is that when I began to raise, dedicate a room as an altar where I spend time with God in the room, you know what I found out? I ended up spending more time with God than when I did. There is something about having something outside of you that remember that reminds you, hey, I that room called the altar. I might be spending time with God. It has exploded my now. Let me give you a longer definition of an altar. And I hope you are writing it down. You know, you know, you know that this again will be available for you to digest. It's always good to write these things down. What is an altar, Dr. Miles? Okay, based upon Genesis 28, verse 11 to 17, you can go in your own time and read it. When you get the replay, enjoy it. You can pause the replay and then just open up that scripture and read it and just eat it up because you're going to find the entire definition I'm giving you here can be found, can land perfectly in the story of Jacob as he gets to the, the Bethel where Abraham built an altar there and he, he had an encounter with God. 
You know, why didn't God encounter him all the many hours he was running away from Esau to go to Syria? It is because he had not yet found a legal point of entry where God can, where God could encounter him. God is a see, God is God is so honorable, he will not violate his word. He won't do it. An altar is a law God has put upon himself and every other spirit. So an altar is a supernatural landing strip. Think of an airport. That's an altar. You know? So when I see an airport, that's an altar of airplanes. An altar is a supernatural landing strip. A power station. You want power? Build an altar. A consecrated place. A place of exchange. A place of sacrifice. A table of fellowship. As a matter of fact, in the Hebrew language, the word for table is the same word as altar. Because you build an altar, it becomes a table. That's why you find altars. That were, that's altars. Were, altars, what you find at the... That's what you, you found. The priest could go and sacrifice animals at the altar and eat from what's on the altar because it was also viewed as a table of fellowship with the divine. A place where covenants are made and sustained. you find this throughout scripture, wherever you see in an altar. It's a spiritual platform, my friends, where spirits, look at the brackets now, God, angels, or demons land. I'm telling you, this is huge, okay? You know, I was radically transformed in my deliverance ministry when I discovered altars. I didn't know them before. So I would cast out devils, and by the grace of God, sometimes they'll be gone in people's lives, but then sometimes they'll come back. I said, why are they coming back? And I realized God, now when I got, when God began to show me altars, God said to me, cast out demons without destroying the altars that are bringing them into the, somebody's life is like uh, chasing a plane away from an airport, but the airport is still functioning. The, uh, the tower is still there. Soon enough, another plane will come. So when you, if you don't want planes to ever fly into your city, destroy the airport. That's why when the military are fighting and they want to just destroy the capability of another country, they destroy airports. Why? Because they know they can land. You know, the air power is gone. An altar, it says, so it's, uh, it's where humanity meets with divinity. You know, that's why when Abraham came into the land where he was promised, the first thing he did was build an altar. And immediately God met with Abraham. You see this throughout scripture. You know, it's amazing. You know, an altar is also a system of authorization for promises, vows, and agreements between divinity and humanity. In other words, your forefathers who made agreement with demons may be long gone, but you are suffering the consequences because an altar that they raise is speaking to those agreements, is speaking to those vows. Until you rise, you rise in priesthood and break that thing. Guess what? You may see your father, your, you may see your yourself going through cycles that don't don't uh, uh, do not uh, support who you are in Christ Jesus. Nevertheless, you are going through those things because these evil altars. But also, this is also good for righteous altars. That's why when, when Jacob got to the altar of Bethel, a righteous altar that was built by Abraham, every promise, every covenant, every agreement God and that God had made with Abraham, voila, was transferred to Jacob. That's why God, I'm the God of Abraham. I, I'm transferring the agreements to you. Wherever you go, I will never leave you. Not because you're not a knucklehead right now, you know, but because of the agreements I made with your father, Abraham. Man, I'm telling you, saints, the priesthood and altars are deep. Okay? Now, in modern language, just to help you kind of, kind of get, uh, in modern language, an altar is like an API between the natural and the spirit world. Now, those who are programmers in technology, they know what an API is. But for some of us, let me explain. The word API in technology simply means a, a applied programming interface. What does that mean? It's what allows websites to talk to each other, websites that don't belong together to talk to each other. For instance, I, you want to buy a book from francismouse.com. I don't own the payment gateway for charging you, but I've got the product. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to PayPal and enter into an agreement. You see, I, I mean, this is a perfect example of a modern day altar. An agreement with PayPal and a sign their use agreement and then they will provide an API, a middle ground, an intermediary technology that will, 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 that will, send, that will pick up on what's happening on my website and then drive it to, to what I need on PayPal, circle it back to me so I can deliver the book. 
that altars. Priesthood is that. Priesthood is that. That's why, that's why, you know, the that's why that at in that's why God at at some point as you dedicate yourself, not only do you become a priest, but God makes your life into an altar. That when you show up, I mean, exchanges between God and man begin to happen and never happened before. Now, this is a statement I'm about to make that's going to blow your mind as we are coming to the conclusion of this powerful teaching. When I, when, when I, as God was teaching me priesthood, I mean, Apostle, he made a statement to me that blew my mind, uh, Apostle Craig. He said to me, Francis, the slowest and lowest manifestation of priesthood is when men are weak. I said, what? He said, yes. The slowest and lowest manifestation of priesthood is when men are awake. I said, God, why? Is it because so many of my people have not fully surrendered to me in the flesh. So when they are awake, their priesthood is always being intercepted by the flesh. That once this, once it's so, everything slows down in their waking. So the, way, the only way I can speed it up so they don't lose the downloads of destiny is I put them to sleep. That's why those eight hours of the day when you go to sleep are important to God. He said to me, the highest and the fastest and highest manifestation of priesthood is when men are asleep. I said, God, come on, show me. He said, Francis, when did I create Eve? Oh my God. I because what he said, when did I create Eve? I said, when you put Adam to sleep, he says, so priesthood doesn't end when you put your flesh on the bed. Your spirit comes out of God. The Bible says there's a part of you, Francis, that I created, which uh, comes out of my, of my essence. I am the God of Israel. I neither sleep nor slumber. So if I don't need sleep, your spirit does not need sleep. So what do you think your spirit is doing those eight hours when your flesh is snoring? Just watching you until you wake up? No, that's when I come to commune with your spirit in the night, spirit to spirit. Uh, that's when I gave, do you know that the wisdom of Solomon was transferred in a dream? You would think if you read the Bible that Solomon and God were talking in a physical meeting like you and I, he was asleep. He was asleep and his spirit was talking to God. How can I take care of these people? Oh, they're great and mighty people. And God says, okay, because you have not asked. In other words, the priesthood of the night proves you are not flesh. You are spirit walking in a body of dirt. You are not your flesh. You are a spirit man having a body experience. Okay, but when you put that body to sleep, your spirit says, hey, daddy, now that now now that flesh that has been getting in the way for eight hours, 10 hours today, and you couldn't even tell me what you wanted to tell me is snoring. Can we talk? So priesthood is deep. It goes into the night. I call that the priesthood of the night. Do you know that the covenant of Abraham in Genesis after he met? Melchizedek, the covenant of Abraham was made when he was asleep in Genesis 14. He was asleep. The Lord put him in a deep sleep and cut a covenant proving that God can cut a covenant with a man in the priesthood of the night. Since priesthood is powerful, but God told me a secret. He says, but Francis, as you surrender, as you crucify the flesh in priesthood to my glory, there'll come a time when there'll be no difference between your priesthood of the night and the priesthood of your waking, that's when you become dangerous. Jesus was, the priesthood of Jesus was fast while he was awake. He was fast while he was sleeping because there was no flesh that got in the way of doing the Father's will. Or oh, somebody ought to praise God that something is about to change in your life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You see, Matthew 13, from, at, at 24 to 30, Jesus shows us the priesthood of the night, that, it, that, that a certain master planted good seed in his field. But while men slept, Jesus is telling us that your sleeping does not end spiritual warfare. If spiritual warfare doesn't end when you are sleeping, then priesthood can't end when you need to be the most alert. 
While men are asleep, an enemy came and sowed tears. Some of you can maybe tell me, can tell me if I asked you that how you had a dream where a snake was chasing you. You had a, you woke up frightened, and from that day you have a difficult, you have a fear, you have a different. Some people literally woke out of a dream and they were sick. They went to bed healthy, woke up sick. How can that be? Because in the night, the devil doesn't say, "Okay, she's going to sleep." Demons, let's go to Disney. We're just going to hang out until they wake up. Then we'll start. No, 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 no. The devil knows your spirit doesn't sleep. It's awake. You know, this is priesthood sense. In the book of Job 33, 15 to 24, Job, uh, God tells Job, when men are, I, I, when deep sleep falls upon men, I come to seal their instruction. This is powerful. You know, so as we, Receive the mysteries of priesthood and the altar. Oh my God, even your sleeping will become an adventure in divine odyssey. Even your sleeping will become supernatural. In your sleeping and your waking, you'll be a walking, uh, you'll be a walking nuclear arsenal in the hand of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Man of God, give me the next try. I'm, I'm so fired up about this. Now, what is the power by now the power behind the altar? So the, we want to know where the power behind the altar comes from. The power behind the altar is rooted in two factors. Number one, the faithful attendance of the human attendant to the altar. Every altar becomes weak for lack of attendance. So if you build an altar and you don't attend to it, whether it's an altar of God in your heart and you stop praying, you're not getting that daily devotion. Oh. A daily time with God, you know, guess what? If the altar becomes weak for lack of attendance, and soon enough, you'll be calling the name of Jesus and not see the same results you used to see when you used to pray and spend time with God every day. You simply say, Jesus, and the power of the glory will show up. Now you don't pray. You are too busy. You do this. The altar becomes weak and weak for the lack of attendance because you don't know the power behind the altar is rooted in two major factors. The attendance of the attendant, the faithful attendance of the attendant, and number two, the sacrifices of the human attendant to the altar. That means when God tells you, do this, pay for this, or, or maybe God challenges you in order for you to elevate your priesthood, I want you to sign up for this school, or I want you to buy that book. That, those are sacrificial. In that, that sacrifice in finance, or it could be in time. God said, I want you to go and spend time with Apostle Craig in Colorado. Get in your car, just drive. Oh, but, I don't have, yeah, you, but I don't have the time, but you find the time. That sacrifice you are doing, even when they, in the natural you don't have time, Guess what? Your altar becomes stronger by that sacrifice. David understood this when there was a plague in Israel. Second Samuel 24, 2025, 20, there was a major plague. 70,000 people died because David had sinned by numbering the people of Israel. And the prophet uh, Nathan told him, if you want to fix this, you have to build God an altar on the property of Aranua, the Jebusite. He was not even a Jewish. So he just lived in the kingdom of David, in David's kingdom. The king went to him. When Aranua saw David, he was so happy to see the head of state. He said, whatever you want, you want my land, you can have it for free. You want an altar, I have bricks, I've got everything you need. Even the cow I'll give you. But David understood the mystery of the priesthood and the altar. He understood no altar can have power that is denied sacrifice by the attendant who attends to the altar. So he said, no, I would not get from you that which costs me nothing. I'm going to pay a price, a heavy price, because I want to feel the, my sacrifice seeping into the altar. You know, you cannot tell me that you are serious about priesthood if investing in raising that altar is a problem. You could easily invest a thousand dollars to go to Disney and watch Mickey Mouse, but then say, then you think about, well, you know, I want to sign up for that course, but it was ninety dollars. You know, you know what? Are you kidding? You just spent a thousand dollars chasing Mickey Mouse around, and then you wonder why your priesthood is weak because the power behind the priest, the altar, is rooted in these two factors the sacrifices of the human attendant. That's why we have to learn priesthood again, or we are in big trouble, especially in America. Boy, are we in trouble. 
if we don't learn priesthood, we are in trouble. We can't rescue America from the hordes of hell that have come uh, into America through all the nonsense that's happening in the country. You know, if we don't rise with the priesthood, maybe you come from a different country, you're experiencing the same thing. The priesthood is the answer to the healing of the nation, but you've got to raise it. Hallelujah. Next slide, man of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Well, here, here we go. So this is the final slide in the teaching. I hope somebody has been blessed. I mean, man, I'm feeling so good. This I know I know somebody has been blessed. You know, I know somebody has been blessed. I know that God has been touching you by spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. Now, so this begs the question, if priesthood is this important, if priesthood is this common to scripture, if priesthood is inscribed in every aspect of scripture, then Dr. Miles, I have a question for you, and I'm glad you asked me. What is the highest priesthood in the universe? What is the highest priesthood? Because if I'm going to be doing priesthood, I want to be able to operate the device at the very highest level. Well, there are two God ordained priesthoods in the Bible revealed to man. And it's not Buddhism. <laughs> it's not Confucius. It is not Hinduism. It's not Islam. There's only two God ordained priesthoods in the Bible revealed to man. Namely, the Aaronic or Levitical priesthood. Hebrews 7 verse 5 talks to us that even though Levi was among the tribe, was a member of the tribe of Israel, he was caught to collect tithes out of the people of Israel because the office of the priesthood was given to Levi when God separated the Levite unto himself. So for 4,000 years of, of Jewish history, we see the Levites a shadowing the, uh, our priesthood because our priesthood as New Testament believers is much higher than that of Levi. But nevertheless, God uses the shadows and the types of the Aaronic or the Levitical priesthood to let us know the lifestyle of a priest, that you never let the fire on the altar go out. You never do that. You know that the, that the altar is a place of sacrifice. You know, you see that it's a place of glory. It's a place of encounter. God is using Levi to prepare us, you know, because we are the one God has been after. We are the one who's going to bring in, usher in the coming of the Messiah. Okay, so the second priesthood revealed to man. Now, even though I mentioned it second, it was the first priesthood revealed to man. The Melchizedek priesthood. My God, don't get me going. My God, I have so much on the Melchizedek priesthood. The Melchizedek priesthood, also known as the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 7, Psalms 110, the Lord has sown, the Lord has sown with an oath, and you will not repent. You won't change his mind to please anybody. You, Yeshua, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Now, if my head, Jesus, is a priest in the order of Melchizedek, how can I, the body, be in anything else but that Melchizedek priesthood? But here's the kicker. So many of you are coming from churches where pastors have never preached one message on the most important priesthood God ever gave to man, the Melchizedek priesthood. How can you function in it? How can you know it? How can you enjoy it? How can you unlock the power of this priesthood of the kingdom that changed the life of your father and my father in the valley of the kings, Abraham? It was Melchizedek. For those of you who love communion, I love communion. Well, listen to me. If you love communion, you better understand that communion did not begin with Jesus in the New Testament. Jesus was reflecting the past when he gave us the communion. The first uh, priesthood, the first being to bring to bring uh, the revelation of communion as a way of encountering God, as a way of changing your internal dynamics, as a way of lifting your priesthood to higher level, it was milk. Day. He brought bread and wine to Abraham. Most people, when I tell them that, they go, oh my God, I never even thought about it. I said, yes, communion was brought to the earth by the Melchizedek priesthood. That means you never, ever understand communion at its highest level, let alone Jesus. If you don't understand the priesthood of eternity, the priesthood of the kingdom that brought Abraham into a living covenant with God. The Melchizedek priesthood is such a lofty priesthood. It's such a lofty priesthood that the book of Hebrews tells us that even Levi 
was in the loins of Abraham when Melchizedek met Abraham. And therefore, even Levi gave tithes, he paid tithes through Abraham in homage to a superior priesthood. Dr. Miles, what does this mean? It means with the day you begin to understand the Melchizedek priesthood, the day you begin to actively pursue it, walk in it, understand it. Listen to me. Some of the battles you are fighting with this stupid witchcraft here, you will disappear. Why? Because you are going to be the one who is going to be the superior author. You see, I mean, of the two priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood is by far the superior priesthood of the two. So when you and I walk in that realm, my God, demons and devils have to think twice because now we are connecting, we are in alignment with the priesthood of heaven. As a matter of fact, everyone who's in heaven, your loved ones who have gone ahead of you, your preachers who have gone ahead of you, that you used to love, Kevin Kuhlman or Robert, all of those people, guess what? In heaven today, guess what priesthood? They are worshiping God. Uh, holy to the Lamb, holy, worthy is he. It's in the Melchizedek priesthood. It's the priesthood of the heaven. According to Hebrews 6, it's the priesthood that goes behind, beyond the veil of the flesh. It goes beyond the veil of witchcraft into the very holy of holies, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when you begin to operate in that Melchizedek priesthood, don't be surprised if you are drawn in. You keep, God keeps wooing you behind the veil until you become an addict of glory. You become an addict of his presence. You see, here is the final statement I want to make. All New Testament believers, all New Testament believers, without exception, whether you know it or not, whether you are Baptist, whether you are Anabaptist, or whether you are Pentecostal, whether you are charismatic, whether you are Presbyterian, if you call Jesus Lord and you genuinely instill him as your Lord and Savior, whether you like it or not, you are under the Melchizedek priesthood. But, uh, but unfortunately, the majority of Christians don't know how to operate effectively in this eternal priesthood. But you know what's exciting? There is a solution. Apostle. Dr. Miles, that is incredible, uh, the things that you are sharing with us there. Uh, and, you know, I, I, it was amazing some of the things that, that you said I've never thought of before. I understood about priesthood, but I never thought uh, that one statement you made that that uh, the weakest form of priesthood is when you are awake. I don't know about <laughs> people, but that's a shocking statement. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, because the, the funniest thing, you know, many times in the New Age movement and all that, people are trying to figure out how to increase their their own, uh, come into more of their own life. You know, how yes. to increase their capacity and all this. And what you are saying is, actually, you need to diminish your own capacity and let your spirit rise up and commune with God <laughs> and receive his capacity. That's and right. It's amazing. Yes. That happens many times when you are asleep more than awake. Well, I know one of the biggest questions when we go to a webinar like this, many people ask, I just need more. I mean, I feel like all you did was give me the appetizer. Is there a meal coming? <laughs> is, is there? <laughs> are you just going to drop us and leave us? Like, what are we going to do now? Now you've whetted my appetite. Okay, I realize I don't understand about landing zones i don't understand about interfaces uh, i mean i get the yes. concept but i don't know how to practically operate in it what what can i do and uh the thing that uh that i want to share with you that dr miles has done he has created an online school to teach people about the order of Melchizedek. And uh, this is something brand new, Dr. Miles. Is that true? You haven't done this before. I mean, it's a lifelong dream, you know, to do this, to really, and God really spoke to me. He said, it's time. He said, the thousands will be trained by you. He said, you need to share. Don't die. Don't waste time. And don't die with what I gave you 
on the Melchizedek priesthood you need. I was prophesied many years ago by saw some very high level prophet who said, God is going to use you to teach the body of Christ, the Melchizedek priesthood, you know, and, uh, but now technology has got up, man of God, to where I can do it beautifully, where we'll be combining the power of these live type of meetings with e-learning, a combination of that. And it's going to be amazing, amazing. I think if you can go to the PowerPoint, maybe we can go through what the Lord is giving us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow, 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 wow. So, <laughs> so I share with us, un unpack for us, what is the Melchizedek master class, the order of Melchizedek, and how does it work? How can people participate in it? Well, listen, we have an exciting opportunity, you know, right now, I mean, we have an open enrollment of the order of Melchizedek master class online, uh, online academy. I'm telling you what, what, what uh, it's going to be. The way this school is going to be, man of God, is we are going to run it like a normal school where we have every, it's, we, you know, that we, as you're going to see later in the, as we go down in the slides, is that we have 18 modules, which will be taken over six, eight, every six more, every semester, who have six modules, that will take 12 weeks to unpack. In other words, each module will have two weeks to unpack, part one and part two. Module one will have part one and part two. Module two of part, so, and then when we we finish the semester, we are going to go ahead and they take a break for a month and come back for semester two. And then finally, students can graduate in semester three. But I'm telling you, man of God, it's going to be incredible. So basically, the people will be able to I'll be able, I'll be teaching live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, beginning March the 12th. I'll be teaching uh, the school. It opens up March 12th for those who are, who are, who, are, who, who enroll as students, okay? And then I'll be live, just like I'm live now. I'll teach on the module. I'll do a part one of the module, then open up for Q&A so the students can learn in real time. I give them answers. And then when the, school, when the session is over, that session immediately will be uploaded online where they have access to that same module for seven days before part two to finish the module. And so and so it's going to go. Man of God, it's going to be the case of order and priesthood on steroids. I'm telling you, People find, you know, that going to some Bible colleges where they pay, they spend ten thousand of dollars, it will be a waste of money because what they get from this. I have a PhD theologian tell me I've never heard this before. Nobody right. talks about is it like this. Well, that's what we're making available, a man of God. So, <laughs> Doctor Miles, let's let's look at some of the contents of what's going to be in this master class. Go through that for us. Yeah, you know, so these are the modules, man of God. Semester one is the begins, opens up with the great transition from institutional Christian to the kingdom. Man of God, this is where I'm going to show, make it very clear that the kingdom of God doesn't work for Christians. The kingdom of God works for kings and priests, you know, who are called to advance the kingdom. I'm going to set people free from religious baggage. It's going to be powerful. And I'm going to answer the most important question, you know, between Christianity, Judaism, and the order of Melchizedek, which of these three predates the others? It's going to be a no-brainer. It's going to be so powerful. The <laughs> tabernacle of David in, is the module, man of God, where we are going to begin to examine why David was called a man after the heart of God, why David was the most was different from any king of Israel. For instance, man of God, David would put on an ephod, which only the, only the high priest could put on and never got judged for it. How would David put on the ephod? Meanwhile, when Saul just made a mistake of sacrificing an animal, he lost the kingdom. And yet David could wear the ephod, the holiest garment in the priesthood of Levi, and God never rebuked him. What is it about David? And then the tabernacle of David, about how does it relate to intimacy with God? The, what about worship today? It's powerful. And then number three will be an in-depth analysis 
of the might, the meeting. I'm going to go into the nuances, the prophetic elements, what they mean to a believer, what they project about Jesus, what they, what they mean eternally, all that happened when Abraham met with Melchizedek. Then number four, the king of Sodom, because the same time Abraham met with Melchizedek, there was a king, another king, with a different unrighteous trading floor who appeared just after Melchizedek. This is the one that is destroying Christians in the marketplace if they don't touch the Melchizedek order. The king of Sodom, he's the one behind the transgender nonsense. He's the one behind the perversity we are seeing in our age. He's the one behind the corruption in our politics. Okay, Moji number five, my God, man of God, this is what most, those people love for Holy Communion, this will be their favorite. And they, we are going to have an in-depth analysis of the bread and the wine of the Melchizedek order that was given to Abraham. What was in the elements? Why was Abraham changed by it? What did they do? How does that relate to us? Oh, amazing. And then we'll end uh, semester one after 12 weeks with the order of Aaron and the Levitical priesthood. Why? Because if we don't understand the shadows and types of that priesthood, we'll never appreciate how high Yeshua has, has made our priesthood in the Melchizedek order and what is expected of us as priests and kings and the God. That is <laughs> one. A, a lot of people, Dr. Miles, they're saying, okay, I'm ready. I want to sign up. Just give me the sign up page. Well, we're, we're going to get there. Just hang in with us. And Dr. Miles, let's go through and look at some of the contents of semester two. Wow. Semester two begins after the first 12 weeks and the month break will come back. And then we are going deep now. An in-depth analysis of the order of Melchizedek. What is it? How does it connect between heaven and earth? Why is Jesus called the high priest of the Melchizedek order? Why did, was Jesus the only one of the three who had to die for us? Was it, you know, I mean, why was the lamb of Jesus Christ shed? Because you can't, you can't be the lamb who's, who's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Because if it's slain, then the blood of Jesus does not come from the earth. It comes from the realm of eternity. If blood comes from heaven, then what priesthood presides over the offering of blood? Because wherever there's offering of blood, a priesthood must preside. Could it be the Melchizedek priesthood? Oh, it's going to be amazing. What about the star of Bethlehem? What are the prophetic dynamics? Why did the Magi, what was the story of the Magi so important? I'm going to show people how to attract their financial Magi in the order of Melchizedek, how God finances the star seed. I'm going to teach them about the inheritance of Abraham's star seed. You know, they're going to find out that Abraham was given two brands of seed, the Jewish seed, the sun seed, and the star seed. The stars, the sun seed are the Jewish descendants, they are natural descendants. Sent, but it's a spiritual seed where God says, look up. That's us in heavenly places. And what does that look like? Then, my God, one of the most misunderstood aspect of Jesus, the royal high priestly ministry of Jesus. Why did the, I mean, we are going to examine and tear apart that subject. Jesus, our royal high priest. Because, you know, man of God, until we say Jesus, we can't see ourselves as he is, so are we on earth. So we have to know him to know ourselves. Then tithing, oh my God, as there have been so much unnecessary controversy around tithing. I'm going to show the people that tithing did not begin with Malachi. It began with Melchizedek. You know, it's a different type of tithing. It's the highest form of tithing. I'll even keep people the reason why Abraham was given tithe. You know, one of the reasons Abraham was given tithe is to deliver him from tithe, tithing under the order of Melchizedek. He comes with the power to deliver people from mammon. Mammon is one of the most strongest spirits, difficult spirits to overcome in more circles. We're going to go deep on what that means, what looks like. Then finally, we're going to end semester two with the order of first things. We're going to examine why Jesus is radical about statements like this. I know your works, I know your perseverance, but I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Why? Because you have left your first love. What is the order of first things? Why does God like to be first? What is the kingdom first? Uh, why, oh, I mean, we are going to go, why is the order of Melchizedek the first priesthood above every other priesthood? If you miss the Melchizedek priesthood, which is the first priesthood of heaven, it doesn't matter what, what you touch, something will be missing. The order of first things, that is semester two, man of God.
That's awesome. And each of these are six weeks. Is that right? 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Okay. Yes. Let's look at semester three then and, and share with us the contents of that. Oh, semester three. Now we are going, we're running towards graduation where we go in the gospel of the kingdom. My God, you know, ever since my, my spiritual father and friend of the Mouse Manor died, we don't find so many people who are passionate about the gospel of the kingdom. But I'm telling you, you are many people are going to enter heaven and realize they lost out because they lived religiously when they should have been advancing and enjoying the gospel of the kingdom. So we define the kingdom. What is the kingdom? How do you operate in the kingdom? What do you write you have in the kingdom? And then now, when, now that we have done that, how do we take the kingdom in the marketplace, in the culture, it, oh, it's in the seven mountains? It's going to be powerful. Then we deal with the manifest sons of God. We ask the question, why is all of creation? There has to be something big. Why is all of creation, including the earth, everything is crying for the manifestation of the sons of God. And by the way, what is the connection between the manifest sons of God and the order of Melchizedek? That's what we are going to be answering, man of God. It's so exciting. You know, and then the, we'll go into the power of the order of Melchizedek, where I'll break down the powers of this order and that you can expect to begin to manifest in your life as you embrace it, begin to walk in it. Then we're going to be dealing with the fathering dimension. That when Ab when Melchizedek came to Abraham, he's the one who changed his name from Abraham, which means exalted father. What's killing the body of Christ, what's killing families today, is the spirit of the exalted father. The exalted father is the father who says, "What well, you exist for me. You are my child, but you exist for me. And you know, in most in in the culture, in the boardrooms, in the house, this is the problem. When Melchizedek came and said, "Abraham, you now be called, we call Abraham or Abraham of the Most High God," he changed his name from Exalted Father to Father of Many Nations. So in this module, we're going to be deal, dealing with. The, we're going to be dealing with, we're going to be, we're going to begin to go deep down into knowing God the Father and also to understand that the opposite of Father is orphan, the orphan spirit, that the biggest, most toxic spirit on earth is not Jezebel, it's not Leviathan. It's an orphan spirit. When Satan and the angels rebelled against God, they collectively became the first orphans. So the number one product of Satan, whatever he's been, is he, he, he leaves orphans disconnected from fathers or from Father God in his wake. Then finally, we're going to end with how, has, how does the order of Melchizedek uh, reconcile the kingly role of the believer and the priestly role? Since we are both, when can I when can I be a priest? When can I? You are gonna know how the two interface. So there'll be time when the kingly anointing will rise, there'll be time when the priest, it's gonna be like a beautiful symphony. And mostly in that also module, we I'm going to show people how God is gonna transfer the end time wealth we've heard that the wealth of the sinner is laid up. For the just. But here's the problem. If you don't know the modalities of transfer, you'll be talking about it and no transfer. A priest on his throne, I'll show you the modalities of transfer of the promised supernatural transfer of wealth. That will conclude the school, will graduate our students beautifully. We, I mean, it's going to be a beautiful man of God. So that is what the Lord has, has, has given us. Thank you so much, Dr. Miles, for sharing that. I, I know you're just launching this school, and so there's a special opportunity for people who want to register and get a, become a part of the school right now that makes it a lot cheaper than uh, later. So I know you have a special offer for people that are watching this webinar or just the replay of the webinar. So let's go through that. Share with us what is the special offer for people on this webinar? My God, listen. First and foremost, as of 2026, oh no, as of 2025, sorry, as of 2025, the school will be 9.95 a year. Oh no, no, sorry, per semester. You know, 9.95. Why do I say that? Because it's actually, it's you know, it's worth way more than that. 
You know, it's worth more. I, let me tell you, let me give a story that will help illustrate that. I had a school on Melchizedek in Texas, and the, and, a, and and a key some key leaders came to the to the to the meeting. One guy, after two modules, two modules, he was so impacted, he was sobbing. So during the uh, the tea break, I was going to the restroom. He stopped me. He said, "Sir, you you may probably never heard this before. It may sound weird." but I'm not going to sit one more class with you unless you change what you charge me at the door. <laughs> this is too good. I feel I'm feeling guilty knowing what I was charged for registration. So he opened his wallet. He counted 10 bills. He said, just the two modules are worth a thousand dollars. Now I can feel better about going through the school. I, I just gotta do this. It's for my own peace of mind. This is too good. Well, next year it will be 995 per semester. But this year, because we are launching it, we're introducing it to the body of Christ. We are only charging 497, man of God, 50% off. So they basically begin by saving 500 by being the first year students of 2024. You know, awesome. yes, you know, I, I, I was going to say, I know that's not all because always in in uh, the initiation or the launches of a class like this, there are other bonuses that you mm. always have available to people and offer to them. Uh, you want to go ahead and share what uh, some of the bonuses are that you're going to offer for people that are ready to, to get in, engaged right now and uh, start learning how to operate in the in the order of Melchizedek. Ah, I tell you, this is amazing. You know, first and foremost, there are, there are four bonuses, man of God, that we are giving right at, at top of the back that adds to more savings because, again, it's the first year. It's the launch. So we want to just call, uh, grandfather people in, uh, you know, but uh, uh, I mean, that's the, the first come. This is why sometimes the early adopters, even in companies, they get blessed, you know. But those mm -hmm. who come later, you know, it's just what it is because we, right now we are really undercutting it. So we have, 12, we have four bonuses. The 12 laws of an alter ecos, my God. You know, this 12 laws of an alter ecos is when I sat down and I literally go step by step explaining the 12 laws of an altar. If that does not help your priesthood, nothing can. It is so powerful. It is so powerful. You know, and then we have the seven drops of blood ecos. The seven blood drops of blood where I go through the seven places where Jesus shed his blood and then examine what altar was Jesus trying to destroy because God doesn't shed blood. God doesn't waste blood, especially the blood of the son of God. Why was it dropped there versus the not? Why, why those seven places? What do they reverse in the creation? What do they reverse in me? That is a equals they get to get. As a matter of fact, it's already ready for them to enjoy as soon as they sign up. The bonuses, you know, are there, you know, but again, they'll be disappearing if people take too long. So, but I'm telling you, within the, the next, uh, you know, 72 hours, these bonuses are available to the people that are signing up. Number three, the healing of soul fragmentation. My God, it's a two-part ecos where I teach deeply on how to get rid of any trauma. How trauma compartmentalization causes, causes the breaking down of the soul into compartments like almost the way a, 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 a locomotive really is. A train, you know, it really is. And then all of a sudden, there are areas of your life that are completely under darkness and other areas you are under light. So anytime, you know, things spill over into the compartment where there's been no healing, you act like a completely different person. Then afterwards, you hate yourself for it. Why did I act like that? I'm going to show you the healing of soul fragmentation. And it's it's very powerful. It's deep. And then, of course, there is the Order of Melchizedek Revised Book. Look at the new cover. It's a new cover we now have. It's the Order of Melchizedek Revised Book. I've added a new chapter. It's beautiful. All of these bonuses add up to $521.95, an additional $521.95, uh, you know, that they are saving just by... Jumping on the in the river with us, man of God, in the next 72 hours. The good news is they they can do a one-time payment or they can do five-month installments 
Both are available as a way of signing up for semester two. What they are paying for now is not the three or school. This is just semester one that they are paying for because the whole school is worth about at least $3,000. But again, because we're in the first year, we have kind of, we, we came in just cutting at 50% and stuff like that. So this pays for semester, semester, the 12 weeks of the semester we're about to start. That begins much that begins March uh, the 12th. So we have to run and get going. But in the meantime, you can enjoy these beautiful bonuses while you are waiting for our first live class on March the 12th. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let me review again, Dr. Miles. What people get is they're going to get six live interactive classes with you. Is that right? They're not recordings. They're actually live classes that you're doing. Is that right? 12, 12 live classes. 12 live classes in the uh in the semester is that right yes every sem uh, every every semester has 12 live classes every semester okay. so they total of 36 12 live classes in this first semester and then in addition to that for free you're just giving away to people that are want want to get involved with this the 12 laws of an altar course Yes. worth $99, the seven drops of blood e-course worth $199, the healing of soul fragmentation worth $199, and the order of Melchizedek revised book worth $24.95. So they're getting for free in addition to half price or half off the entire semester, uh, a $521 or $522 value really for free. Is that right? Yes. And that's the, because they're early adopters, you know, I want to honor them for supporting the vision. You know, we are launching this, but we know that this thing is going to explode all over the world. The people have been asking me for years, when do you do this? So when, as more people find out, it's going to be amazing. And that means we're going to need to hire more staff. So it, to do a lot of things behind the scenes. So next year, we're expecting it's, 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 going to, it's going to go to 9.95 per semester. But I'm telling you, people still do it because the value is just so priceless. And, and but people this year, it's a great deal. This year is a really, really great deal to jump in the river. They can find it right now at francismiles.com slash OM school, right? That's right. That's right. All right. So that's the 12 laws of an altar ecos. That's the seven drops of a, seven drops of blood ecos. It's wait, waiting for them. That's the healing of soul fragmentation ecos. It's waiting, waiting all those ecoses free of charge. So basically, all these goodies, man of God, they are they are they, they they get them for free if they sign up within 72 hours. We know the total value is fifteen hundred dollars, but guess what they save? Just slightly over a thousand dollars. That's not bad, you know, you know, and get all the impartation they'll get in 12 weeks of live interaction with Dr. Miles with Q and A built into every class. Wow, that's an awesome value. Thank you so much for doing that, Dr. Miles, for for first of all doing the research and the study and, and the anointing that it took to receive this. And then secondly, packaging it together in a way that people can understand it and receive it easily. And then thirdly, for giving it away at half price, plus a whole bunch of other bonuses for free. Uh, we really appreciate you doing that for people. That is just an awesome, awesome thing. Uh, to to help people as much as possible to to move out of the traditions that we've been taught and to actually come into the kingdom of God and begin to take our place to function in what God has called us to, not just to sit and watch other people do things, but to learn ourselves how to function in the order of Melchizedek. Thank you so much. No, I'm so excited, man of God. So again, people, you can go to francismiles.com forward slash OM school and let's begin an amazing journey in Jesus. And by the way, don't you ever look at this and say, I don't have the money. No, that's the wrong way to think. God has the money. If God is telling you to do it and you have a desire, you want to be part of it, I'm telling you, don't stop limiting God. So right now, if it's your desire to do it, there's somebody who, who, who's sleeping and going to have a dream about you or they're going to have a desire to call you. I don't know why I want to call you, but God told me to give you $500. And you're like, oh my God, do you know what? 
God told me I need to sign up for a school. That's what I needed. You know, you don't, you don't limit. We need to stop limiting God and let God be God. And you watch God move in your life in Jesus' mighty name. But I'm telling you, it will be the best investment. It is literally a money back investment, apostle. It's that good. You know, it is that good of the content and impartation they are going to be receiving through the school. You know, I, I don't have a revelation God has given me that's much more higher, in my own opinion, than the order of Melchizedek. So when I'm in that space, oh man, I'm another person, you know, because I want the body of Christ to enter this priesthood and really understand it. So man of God, I'm so excited. I thank God everybody. I see some people. Amen. Hallelujah. There may be some people that I see. I want to see some, I mean, maybe there might be some questions on the, hallelujah, on the, there are some questions, and and let me just say that you just disappeared from my screen, Doctor Miles. I don't know what happened there, but uh, are you still there? Yes, I know my my camera died. Oh, your camera died. Okay, well, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to change the camera. I'm going to change the camera to the camera on the computer, and then you can see my handsome face <laughs> I, I thought i thought you were just testing out to see who had really grasped the order of melchizedek because probably only the people who are operating in the priesthood of melchizedek <laughs> can see you and and, and... <laughs> okay now <laughs> you're back uh, again you know i would just encourage you if you are thinking about this if the holy spirit has touched your heart the most important things pray ask god god is this for me is this for now is this what you want me to do? Because the most important thing is for us to hear the voice of the Lord, for to, for us to do what he's telling us to do, uh, not for us to just do whatever we want to do or what we don't want to do, but find out, God, is this the timing for me? Is it my time to move forward in this? If you've got time, Dr. Miles, let's answer a couple of questions. Here's a real practical one. When is the deadline to sign up? Could you share with that again? Share that with us? Well, listen, uh, you the deadline really, as it relates to the bonuses, is 72 hours, you know. Uh, 72 hours, some of the, the bonuses may not be there, but the score would be there. You know, so if you're trying to get the bonuses, I think, uh, let's believe God that in the next 72 hours, the Lord will do something. You know, and I just pray the Lord, Lord, I just pray, thunder. Father, I pray for 72 hour miracles. With mm -hmm. 24 hours, eight within the next within the next few hours to 72 hours, Lord, I'm asking for miracles of provision for people like never before in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Two Lord. Other yes. real, real practical questions. Could you go through the payment plan again? What was it that you said? How can people well, pay? Well, we have two payment plans. Well, the one is the one-time payment at 497, you know, uh, and then the other one is the installment because sometimes we believe people want to jump in it, but they maybe they can't do the 497 at one go. So we have an installment plan of five months for $110. So $110 for the next five months, you know, but but the system, just remember though, if you choose installments, if you, you have just don't forget, sometimes don't forget to make sure that uh, when the installment is is to them is, is comes around and the company that we are using wants to debit your account, make sure the money is there because if you don't, then you'll be locked out of your classes until uh, uh, you restore it by paying again. So, but at least it's available. So I have, so actually we have had some, we have had people who are just paying it outright, 497, they are done. And we got a few that are doing installments. I don't care how you get in, you just get inside and, and, we, be, and we believe God and just move with us. It's going to be amazing. So those are the, and both of those pathways are available on the landing page, uh, uh, Apostle. And, and other people are wanting to know, how do they get the recording of this? Would it automatically be sent to them? When would it be sent yes. to them? Can this send it to recording others? will be email to everyone today, including those who did not make it because we actually had, uh, we are between the webinar I did on Tuesday and now we had about oh, over 3,000 people signed up. So, you know, we have had uh, at least 900 people attend. So we know that there's at least 2,100 people because of time zones, whatever they are, or they missed the email. So we are sending the email to Everyone who attended today and the other 2,100 people, 
who and others and he, others. By the way, feel free to forward this email to people anywhere in the world who you think, ah, they would love this. Oh, they would love this. Maybe you've got friends who'll be saying, who'll be telling you, you know what? There's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. Tell them, hey, hey, girl, or hey, or, hey, brother, I have found the more. It is the priest, it is the order of Melchizedek masterclass. I'm sending it to you. You and I let's sign up and run with Dr. Miles. So that may be it. So feel free when you get the link in your email to just forward it to as many people as you can. We're good with that. And uh, other people are saying, so this is the first semester. Uh, and it's normally going to be nine ninety five. But will the people who sign up for four ninety five for the first semester will they be able to get the second and third semester also at it's a discounted price of four ninety five instead of nine ninety five? Yes, yes. So once you pay the first semester, you are grandfathered in at that price for the year. Yes. So yes. Okay. And uh, I know there are some some more detailed questions that people are asking about teaching that probably uh, are going to be answered in great detail in the courses. Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, I also forgot to mention that when they sign up, they also get a very robust, well-designed student manual that they can download. And then also we we the, uh, there's also we've got some beautiful multiple choice quiz questions that when they go through the a module and they want to test themselves to see how much of the content they understand, there's a multiple choice functionality where they can just test themselves. Let's give an idea of just how the well they are doing at receiving what God is doing. It's, it's going to be, it's going to, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Here's, here's another simple question you can probably answer. Uh, you were talking about the presence of God in the interface at altars. And now uh, somebody wants to know, uh, can we have God's presence uh, also when we walk away from an altar so we know we receive his presence? But when I walk away from the altar, can I still carry with me God's presence? How does that work? Yes, the reason, because, the reason is because your God designed your heart to mimic an altar. That's why God always comes for your heart. Because ultimately, God wants your heart to be a mobile altar. But the reason you need an altar in your home because the heart is the altar for this house, your life, your body, your life. But you also live in a house that has its own battles, its own bills, its own issues, its own climate. So you want an altar so that that house where you are going to lay your head and live your life is all sanctified. It's a place where the glory comes. So that's why I tell people, I tell people, build an altar in your home. But what that building an altar in the home, man of God has done for me is that when sometimes I get so busy, because you know how busy we can be with our, at our level of ministry, I pass by the altar, I feel, um, it's like the altar start, you know, you've heard of the word, the altar call. The altar mm -hmm. call. Everybody knows the, oh, the altar call. That's, it's the altar calls you to go and pray. I pass, I say, you know what? I, I gotta stop this. I'll, 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 I'll write the book later. Every time I pass by the altar, I'm feeling guilty. I'm too busy today. I haven't been before the Lord. I, that's why I love to have an altar or a room dedicated or a corner of your house dedicated to the Lord to remind you, you are a priest. And also you're teaching your children how to be priests. If all you do is wait on the Lord in your heart, your children will never know priesthood. But if they see, they say, Mommy, oh, Daddy, why do you always go in that corner and you take your Bible and you bow down? And you say, oh, because I'm a priest and you are a priest. Now we're having parents teaching children priesthood because they can see it. One, one last question, and we're probably getting close to the time to close. Yes. But some people live in a time zone that is not convenient for when you are actually doing the classes. Will yes. there be replays so that people can maybe wake up in the morning and watch a class that was in the middle of their night? That's the best part. The reason we chose Kajabi, which is the technology we are using for the e-course, for the live session, is that as soon as we record... The, because all the sessions will be recorded, not on Zoom, but in Kajabi itself, the platform. As soon as I'm finished teaching, the platform sucks the, 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 the recording right into the school. It's available like five minutes after it's over. And then they can come back and log into their, log into their student law, uh, uh, portal and find the class. And, and plus the Q&A of the other students 
all will be there. So they will never miss a never miss a beat. Now, when, when if somebody registers today, do they get all four bonuses opened up to them right away? Are they right are away? They... Right away. Okay. Right away. Okay. That, that's all right. Just... Amen. <laughs> let's, just, let's just look one more time and go through what it is that you're offering, and then we we better close with prayer, I guess. So Amen. go through one more time what it is people get. Amen. So if you can go back a little bit further then, uh, before this. Yes. So, yeah, that's it right there. So this, uh, yeah, so this exciting opportunity here that we have, you know, we if you can go three, let's go. Yeah, this right. is the offer. That's the offer. The bonuses, 12 laws of an altar equals, as soon as they sign up, they can begin to eat. Trust me, many people spend a week just on that module. It is deep. It is detailed. They'll be taking so many notes that before they know it, March the 12th, we'll be here and we will be we will be uh, in the actual school. Give me the next one. The next uh, the next slide. Seven drops of blood. The, this is the equals. It's ready to go right now to consume where I take them through the seven drops where Yeshua shed his blood and the altars he destroyed, the things he redeemed, it's deep. Okay, you have a revival in the blood of Jesus. Then the, my God, this is where enemy gets us. The soul, the soul, the soul, the healing of soul fragmented. What do I do? If through trauma, through life experiences, my soul has been fragmented, how do I get fully healed? That's it. That's also available for consumption. And then of course, they get a they get a, an ebook a ebook of the order of the new and revised order of Melchizedek that they can download immediately and begin to consume. And people can get that by going to francismiles.com slash OM school, right? Yes. Yes, they that, can. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Miles, for spending this time with us and for uh, sharing with us the, the revelation of this. I know there are a lot of people that are uh, they, they, it was a wonderful appetizer. A lot of people are hungry for the entire meal. Uh, so that's <laughs> a wonderful thing. As we close out today, I wonder if you would just pray for all of us and yes. uh, and and we'll see you in the e-course. Father, I pray for your sons and daughters. Deep cause unto deep. They did not come to the free webinar for nothing. Something in them was answered in the court to priesthood. Now, Lord, I ask you, God, because you said you shall provide all our needs according to your riches in glory. Lord, I make a demand on your riches in glory for each one of your sons and daughters who said, I don't like the level of my priesthood where it's at. I need help to elevate. So, but I need to get into the school. Lord, I'm asking that if you have to cause their uncles, their fathers, their friends, their bosses, to have restless nights until they say, you know, I don't know why, but God keeps telling me I'm supposed to give you some money. What do you need? Lord, whatever you have to do to provide. And for some of them, you've already provided. I just bind the spirit of mammon that can convince them that they need the money more than they need the priesthood. The devil is a liar. I pray, God, that your anointing will move over everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, as we dedicate this order of Melchizedek Masterclass, and I dedicate the first-year students, that they'll always be the first-year students of the order of Melchizedek Masterclass of, of class of 2024. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Miles, for this awesome Thank you. today, for this Hello. time. We look forward to uh, hearing you personally in the Masterclass. Amen. Uh, Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, and we'll see you in the master class. Amen.